All right, on this episode of Bouks Talking Bouts, want to give a couple sponsor shout outs here. Sovereign Extracts, some great CBD cartridges, THC, got some one in one options there, CBD oils, and the like. But also, real quick, want to shout out USG Canada, putting out some great apparel for boxers, MMA fighters, and for fans alike. And on this show, we got a big fight coming up here as part of Dana White's Contender Series. It goes on August the 11th, happening at UFC Apex, a featherweight tilt between Daniel Swain and TJ Laramie. I mean, I've got TJ on the show. How's your day going so far there, man? Uh, pretty good. Just finished training and, uh, yeah, probably going to relax the rest of the day. And I'm kind of curious, like, whereabouts you're training at specifically, because from what I can tell with your social media, it kind of seems like you're going to a couple different places. Like, where where, where did you just finish training at just there? Um, I was just, uh, I'm at Scorpion MMA with uh, Dan Golkar is where I just finished right now. And that, but I've been training everywhere here in Vancouver pretty much. I've been trying to hit every gym just uh, to get in all the looks I can. Yeah, because I think I'd seen the other day you were training there with Bibiano Fernandez. Like, where are some of the other facilities you're getting to, and who are some of the people you're putting in that regular work with? Uh, I've been training. I went up to the Sound and trained with, like, uh, Cole Smith there, and uh, he's uh, the UFC Bantamweight. And uh, I also trained with... Uh, Maybe Arnold Fernandez and uh, Jay Johnsey over at WKX. And then uh, I got some sparring rounds in at Checkmat as well. Yeah, and I'm kind of curious, like, how all of this is feeling here, man. Because, like, for what seems like quite a while now, there was, like, a myriad of outlets talking about how you're that, you know, next prospect to finally get to the UFC level. Can you kind of characterize how all of this feels, like, finally being in this moment and getting ready to kind of make that long-awaited foray into the UFC kind of level? I mean, uh, it doesn't really change how I train because I feel like I always train like very hard for my fights, but it does give me a little bit more of a motivation just based on uh, just based on the level I'm fighting at and the money involved and stuff too. It's a little bit of a pay increase for me. And as much as like people don't want to say they fight for money, I mean, I don't get punched in the face for free. So um, yeah, everything about it is uh, it's pretty motivating for me. Uh, every like factor of the fight and just the level of opponent is probably most what's motivating me just because it's a little bit well it's like uh like a higher level of opponent than uh what i'm used to you know yeah and i kind of wanted to talk about that a bit because your opponent has you know 30 pro fights heading into this they're you know experienced on a multitude of circuits from what i can tell like m1 challenge but also like bfl and mfc and some other promotions and quite a few submission based finishes as well so like how familiarized are you with your opponent's skill set like are you avidly studying tape heading into this is that something you allocate to others in your camp like how does that work out uh, i mean i always do a lot of the like the watching and stuff myself like uh but people here have been helping me out a lot as well with that uh, i just feel like uh, my fight IQ has always been kind of a little bit like better than most, uh, just because I like uh, I'm passionate about the sport as much as I am, and uh, I've had the opportunity to you know like uh, focus like early on in my career, like each individual aspect of the sport. So it wasn't like I was able to understand each sport in its uh, like entirety before moving and trying to turn it into MMA. So there's certain things you know I feel like if you just start in MMA, it's a little bit harder to kind of like understand certain positions and stuff, but having uh experience everywhere i feel like that's really helped my game and uh with daniel swain too specifically him he doesn't really ch he hasn't changed much in between fights so uh kind of studying someone like that's pretty easy yeah absolutely and i was seeing on social media something you retweeted a bit ago where it was a combat sports lifestyle there they were talking about how you know you and your younger brother the future of mma and stuff like that and they first saw you at ontario open and 2013 what is it like to have people coming out like that just people who've been you know supporting you for quite a while i imagine that has to be a, a pretty cool feeling there man uh yeah it's definitely uh like it's a good feeling to know that people have kind of had their eye on us for a while but at the end of the day you know i still got to win fights if i wasn't winning fights nobody would be here you know what i mean like uh, i wouldn't be where i'm at so at the end of the day you know i just got to put in the work and pull off the wins and hopefully people keep supporting me like that yeah, for sure. It's just looking towards the task at hand and kind of staying the course. I imagine that's something that you've learned from your time as like, you know, TKO champion. Like I remember we've had past interviews and you were talking about how back around that time you maybe got like a little too ahead of yourself in the confidence department and maybe like the, I guess, immediate focus kind of got out of focus as it were. So good to see that you've got everything kind of locked in place there. 
Yeah, I definitely feel like I've uh, like I've improved my training and stuff. I spend a lot more time in Vegas, so like I'm getting a lot more work in with like uh, like higher level bodies as far as training partners and stuff on a daily basis. You know what I mean? Where it's like you go in Vegas and it's like you're guaranteed to have like at least one or two good people to train with every practice versus like a smaller city like where I'm from. You're not really guaranteed to get amazing work every time depending who shows up or who's got a fight coming up stuff like that right so it's like always having someone to compete with in the gym is what's made me a lot better and i feel like uh since like i've lost last i've become a lot more humble and become like i've become a better student of the game again versus uh thinking that i kind of knew what I, everything you know what i mean yeah definitely man so what's the training timeline heading into this i imagine it's going to be after you know going to the different gyms in bc you're going to allocate a certain amount of time to you know being in vegas training like you said but i'm also kind of wondering like how much time you got in with you know maximum training center before this like what has the training timeline looked like heading into this moment and also what does it look like i guess going forward heading into the august fight i was pretty much like on like uh my weight and stuff it was pretty much good like two weeks ago like i could have made weight in a week uh but um uh, I might, I didn't, uh, the only thing I was lacking as far as training during Corona and all that was training partners as far as, uh, like sparring and stuff. I was getting good grappling in with, uh, my jiu-jitsu team, but, uh, didn't really get good, uh, like sparring or anything cause nobody was really available for that. But, uh, I was ready to fight pretty much. Like I felt like for pe- most people been off and stuff like that, but I was ready to make weight already. So, uh, that just makes everything a lot easier going into, uh, this fight camp because that's like usually one of my biggest uh like focuses on fight camp is losing weight um but uh yeah so i'll be spending three weeks in vegas in july and then uh yeah then we uh, have the fight uh so i feel like this is gonna probably be the best uh training camp i've ever had um yeah uh yeah i'm just ready to i could fight in a week or two you know what i mean like i'm just i'm ready to go now but having that extra time just makes it all the better yeah, you seem to keep it going in a lot of ways. Like, you were training in the backyard. You had the mask on and everything like that. Like, trying to facilitate keeping everything going, too. Like, how how much, I guess, was it a confidence builder at all to be able to, like, adapt so seamlessly to what's, like, a pretty difficult n- landscape to navigate on a level of, you know, training for high-level athletic competition? Like, is there any, like, bolstering of confidence that comes with that just in the sense of, like, you can adapt and pivot when necessary to whatever the given circumstances? I mean, I'm always going to be a guy who's going to, like, I can't just sit on the couch and do nothing all day, you know what I mean? So yeah. there was ne- there was never going to be a point in time where I just sat around and waited for something to uh, to work, you know what I mean? I was uh, putting in the work every day or trying to do something every day because, like, at the end of the day, this is my job. So I got to step out and go to work every day just like everybody else. But uh, And I got to find a way, you know what I mean? I can't just stop progress just because uh, there's a corona out there or whatever. Yeah, I know. That's just it, man, for sure. But it seems like you have a very strong kinship with like the guys out there in Windsor and like in doing this Canadian MMA history project that I've been working on for a little bit. Like I've got to talk to some of the, you know, Team Tompkins guys and stuff like that. And they're saying the connection, you know, you guys have like you and Tony and Kyle Preplick and Reno and all those guys like the connection kind of reminds them of like what the you know Team Tompkins lads had and, you know, continue to have there so i mean what does it mean to you to like not only hear that but to also have that kind of like confluence of like training with high level guys but also there's that real tight sort of kinship between you all yeah you know like uh i feel like whenever you're close to somebody it makes uh training a lot easier because people can be more honest with you uh they're not really afraid to hurt your feelings and which, which is exactly exactly what i want you know what i mean like my boxing coach Kara Rowe has never been shy to tell me when i'm screwing up or she feels i need to work on something you know what i mean and i'm pretty much working with her every day she makes time for me whenever i can you know what i mean so um carol especially has been like uh super helpful during all this time and she's really improved my striking i feel like uh like a lot compared to what i was a year ago yeah i mean big shout out to her as well kind of just illustrates like how many great people there are in your team overall there man yeah, luckily I got a lot of a good support system of people that want to see me succeed. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, there, I don't believe in there's ever such thing as like being self-made. You know what I mean? So everybody's had some sort of help along the way. And it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty sad when you see people out there say they're self-made, they're this or that. I mean, at the end of the day, it is us getting in the cage and everything like that. But 
the opportunities, the uh, the training, all that. You know, you need people for that always. Yeah, it's a great mentality to have there, man, no doubt. But something I was also wanting to ask you about because I didn't really, you know, get the chance to with how everything kind of unfolded there at the show. But, you know, Tony getting that title at the last PFC show there, you're cornering him. He's, you know, in the main event and everything like that. What was it like to just be in there and be able to, you know, as a PFC champ yourself, kind of impart some degree of wisdom between the rounds and then ultimately just see your brother have his goal come to fruition too? Like, what was that moment like for both of you guys there? Uh, at the end of the day, you know, for me, I feel like it's all about, it's all about him. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that's his night, you know, he's his own person. So I'm just there to give the advice I can and, uh, hopefully see him succeed. You know what I mean? I would not, I wouldn't want anything more than that. You know what I mean? To see him do well and to, uh, see him, you know what I mean? Accomplish his goals and dreams. Well, that's just it, man. Yeah, it's just kind of an interesting distinction I've noticed with you guys because I think Tony gets like pretty fired up being on the same different cards or being on the same cards as you and everything like that. And I think not that you're not excited per se, but you're just very much squarely focused on what you're doing and you kind of expect the same of him. So kind of an interesting kind of distinction from what I've been able to tell talking to you both over the years. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like this is a selfish sport. Like I can't be like like that was the first time I've cornered Tony as a as him being a pro because we fought on every card other than that. Yeah. So it, it was uh it was good. I felt like he uh enjoyed having me in the corner. So uh that probably get that going again in the future, but for me at the end of the day, I can't focus on um like his fights when I'm fighting, you know what I mean? Like to me like as bad as it sounds, he's just another person on the card, you know what I mean? For me, uh, I got to like tune into what i gotta do you know what i mean like win or lose on his end or whatever happens you know what i mean i'll watch the fight but at the end of the day it is what it is oh yeah for sure both valid approaches i mean it's just whatever works for the individual for sure but to that point i mean it seems like the smaller cage with the ufc apex is something that some people have articulated as being a benefit to them with the 25 footer instead of the 30 foot cage there do you think for yourself like there's not a lot really to that narrative or do you see the smaller dimensions having some benefits to your game uh for me i feel i've been fighting in the exact same size cage for the last three fights so i don't even feel like the tko cage is much smaller but uh or much bigger uh so it to me it really it literally makes no difference it, it's all the same it's literally all the same um i feel like I have pretty good movement. I have good footwork. I have good uh, takedowns. So if anything, uh, yeah, it makes no difference, man. Something that is kind of different, though, that I've been noticing over the last few months is it looks like you're getting more into the podcast world there, Ozzy and the pro. I'm kind of curious about that. Like, are you looking to, you know, get more episodes out there in the future? Is kind of the corona stuff getting in the way of creating new content? Like, what's the status of the podcast at this point? Uh, you know, uh, we definitely still want to work on it and stuff, but obviously me being extremely busy, uh, it's kind of made it a little bit hard. Plus, the MMA world was so slow for a while, it was hard to really even talk about anything. Um, so, yeah, basically, uh, definitely something I, I still want to be uh, active in and interested in. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get that going again soon. Yeah, definitely, man. And I was noticing on social media you were talking about how you know, as of June 5th there, the post was your time at how frustrating this year kind of has been and stuff like that. And understandably so, I think it's been frustrating for a lot of people. Is there a sense of relief with like some of the recent circumstance in as far as like there's a bit of a clearer path? Is there still some level of frustration? Like how would you characterize where you're presently at as compared to that June 5th post there? Oh man, like uh, uh, there, I have nothing bad to say about what's going on right now for me. Uh, like yeah, I have a fight. I have a date, I have a contract signed, I have an opponent, so for me, life's back to normal, you know what I mean? Maybe for some people there's corona, there's this, there's that, but for me, back to normal, that's it. Yeah, no, that's cool, man, I just felt like asking because it seemed like you had a post there towards the end of 2019 that was like, you're really euphoric and hopeful for the months to come, and then you obviously had that one there and, you know, just a few weeks ago in 2020 there, so good to hear the ship's been kind of write it a little bit in some regards there but yeah i appreciate you you know making some time to do the interview and stuff like that man always appreciate that but i'm kind of curious if there's anything that maybe you'd like to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here though 
You know, uh, I'm just uh, very excited for this fight. I appreciate the interview, and um, yeah, I'm I'm just uh, really happy that you know the MMA world, uh, especially, deserves props right now, um, through and through, just based on what, everything that we've been able to do. Uh, viewing numbers are at an all-time high because it's really the only sport going right now. So, uh, and it's amazing I get to fight under such an, a, a great banner, such as like Zufa organization, you know. Or, uh, or the UFC banner uh, with Contender Series there. And just be like, there's not too many people that can book fights right now because <laughs> these regional shows, you know what I mean? These regional fighters, these uh, promoters can't make any money without uh, audience or a crowd. And that's like, who knows when we're going to be able to have that again, right? So uh, I'm just extremely grateful for uh, where I'm at and uh, what's to come. Yeah, maybe you can sneak in a shout out for the barbershop Instagram account there, the old TJ the barber there. Maybe you should do that in the post fight there if you get a chance. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You know because uh, I know people are dying for haircuts. That Windsor just opened up barbershop, so uh, I'm sure when I get back from Vancouver and in between Vegas, I'll be busy, busy, busy. Yeah, no, good to see you're keeping that going, man, for sure. But really excited for this fight coming up here, and I think a lot of other people share that sentiment as well. It goes August the 11th, UFC Apex in Las Vegas, a featherweight tilt going on between Daniel Swain and TJ Laramie. Thanks, as always, for the time and insights there, TJ. Best of luck with the remaining part of your preparations heading into this fight here, and have a great rest of your day too, man. Thank you. You as well.